Welcome back everybody to another review by Fat Ninja Studios. Today we're peering into the mystical world of Shang-Chi and the legend of the Ten Rings. Based on the Marvel comic series of the same name, it's a fantasy martial arts epic that built quite a bit more for the Marvel Cinematic Universe than we thought at first. But before we get into that, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to blast that bell icon to stay up to date with our latest releases. I'm your host, Jackie Kay, and let's dive right in. The film starts out with a man in 16th century China, acquiring the ten bracelets of power and stomping out an opposing army. Here, the rings function differently than in the comics. Instead of wielding elemental abilities, they're more like a magnetized weapon that can deliver blasts of magical energy. Think of a slinky with the ability to fire off Kamehamehas. It also gives the wielder invulnerability and agelessness, and thus the film takes us through a journey through time until roughly 1996, where he discovers a magical forest guarding the entrance to Ta Lo, one of the nine mystical Marvel realms. There he battles the protector, but falls in love with her, the fight unfolding like some beautiful dance between them. They have children, and one of those children, of course, grows up to be Shang-Chi, or Sean as he goes by in San Francisco. Present day Sean exercises before breakfast and parks cars for a living with his trusty sidekick Katie. However, one day, on their way to work, they're attacked on the city bus by some goons from the Ten Rings terrorist group. The most notable villain here is Razor Fist, a B-rated henchman who in the comics worked for some French villain named Velcro and was killed in the same issue he was introduced in. Doctor Doom would eventually go on to make robotic clones of him to be used against Shang-Chi, but otherwise unremarkable. Here in the bus fight though, he manages to snag the necklace from Shang-Chi that his mother gave to him as a child. Katie, who had no idea that Sean could even fight, gets the rundown of his whole family history before he tells her that he's gotta head to Macaw to find his sister, oh, and that his real name is Shang-Chi. Once they arrive, they enter some underground fight club where we see Wong battling Abomination in a ring. Turns out they were in on the fight together and treated it more like a sparring match than anything. A quick way to make a buck. Shang-Chi is strong-armed into having to fight his own match, and ta-da! It's against his sister! She kicks his butt! And then reveals to him that she owns the entire operation. Suddenly, ninjas show up, trying to steal her pendant, an identical jade jewel to the one that Shang-Chi had around his neck. During this fight, their dad shows up, once again wielding the Ten Rings. He tells them to come with him, that he's not trying to kill them or do anything nefarious, but he thinks that he has found their mother, whom they all thought was dead. When they get to his compound, they insert the two jewels from those pendants into the eyes of the dragon statue, and it transforms into a watery, mystical map, showing the hidden passage into Tao Lo. Zhu, their father, believes that the people of Tao Lo are holding their mother captive, as he's been hearing her voice calling out to him. Shang-Chi tells him that it's all bullshit, and so, of course, their dad has them thrown into the dungeons. Here is where we reunite with Trevor Slattery, the actor who pretended to be the Mandarin during the events of Iron Man 3. We also meet Morris, a weird creature from Talo, and it also knows a secret way into its realm. They bust out of the dungeon, steal Razor Fist's car, and make their way to the mystical land. Just like Asgard, Talo is one of the nine realms and has all sorts of magical creatures and godlike beings residing in it. We are greeted by nine-tailed foxes and several dragon horses. With help from Morris, they reach the village where their mother came from and meet her sister, Nan. She welcomes them with open arms and Shang-Chi warns her of Zhu's plan. She tells him that it is not her mother calling to them, but rather the Dark Dweller through the power of the rings. The Dark Dweller, or Dweller in Darkness in the comics, comes from the Nightmare Dimension and is one of the Fear Masters. It feeds on living souls to gain power and only wants to destroy the universe, as most evil cosmic entities do. 
the village alongside Shang-Chi, Katie, Xiling, train in a montage, and like the next day, Zhu and his army show up. A big battle ensues, and Shang-Chi tries to stop his father from reaching the Dark Gate, but he's knocked out into the water. Zhu begins to demolish the gate, releasing the minions of the Dark Dweller, who begin sucking the souls out of everyone and feeding them back to their master. Zhu's forces, along with the village, team up to stop this new threat, and Shang-Chi bursts forth from the lake, riding on top of a huge water dragon. At first I thought this might be Bing Fang Boom, but it's just another mystical creature that resides there, and it begins to eat all the little minions. The Dark Dweller bursts forth from the Dark Gate and begins to wreak havoc. Shang-Chi goes back to battling his father, this time remembering the lessons his mother taught him and how she was able to overcome Zhu, and he manages to basically steal the rings from his father. Zhu gets soul-sucked by the Dark Dweller, and now Zhi Ling, riding on top of the dragon, picks up Shang-Chi and goes to battle in the sky. Shang-Chi forces the god to swallow the rings, and then using his mystical training, makes them tear the beast apart, ending the huge battle. They have a funeral for all of those whom have died in the battle, and Shang-Chi, along with Katie, return to normal life back in San Francisco. The mid credits scene has Wong scoop them up, telling them that the rings are far older than they thought. A theory of ours is that they belong to a celestial known as the Progenitor, and that it's setting off some sort of homing beacon. The final credit scene shows Xi Ling taking over the Ten Rings organization and rebranding it in her own image instead of disbanding it, with the words, the Ten Rings will be back, playing at the end. Overall, the film was fantastic, a very big step into the mystical side of Marvel. It heavily sets up other events for the Eternals coming this November, and I'm excited to see Shang-Chi join with the other MCU heroes, most likely forming the Defenders in the future. We will do a detailed Easter egg video at a later time. I definitely need to see this movie a second time for that. I'm giving the film a 9 out of 10. It's amazing to see Marvel back on the big screen again, and in such a fantastical way. If you've been thinking about skipping this one after the so-so Black Widow film, don't. The trailers do not prepare you for how big this film gets. With that being said, I would like to thank you for checking out this video. Please give it a like, and make sure to subscribe to our channel. We are so close to 100 subs, and we can't wait to celebrate with all of you. If you're feeling generous, please check out our Patreon linked below. And if you want to reach out to us, you can do so on Twitter, at StudiosFat. You can also chat with us on Discord, also linked below. I've been your host, Jackie Kay. And before I go, family is important, but that doesn't mean you have to follow exactly in their footsteps. Making your own path in life being the person you are meant to be, not what other people think you should be doing. You are the master of your own destiny. Thanks again, and take care.